Hello, fellow astro enthusiasts. I thought I would introduce my new telescope that I've recently purchased. This is a Red Cat 51. It's a 250 millimeter focal length uh, telescope with a 51 millimeter aperture. So it's very wide field. I've got it paired with my only uh, astro dedicated camera for deep sky right now. That's the uh, ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro. It's a one shot color camera. And in tandem with that, I've been using the Optolong Alpro filter, which is like a broadband white pollution reduction filter. You could also pair this with, say, the L Ultimate or L Extreme to really get more of a narrow band kind of image through a one shot color. I've, I've considered that. I've got all class five skies in my backyard, so it's not too light polluted and this filter that I purchased seems to, to work very well so uh, I intend to stick with this but it is tempting for the narrow band for say maybe if the moon is out or, or something when I want to image deep sky and the, the conditions just really not favorable but uh, I've got the telescope paired with the ZWO mini uh, guide scope and for a guide camera I'm using the ASI 224MC, that's the planetary camera that I, I take a lot of my planetary photos with. Um, but it works well, this whole setup here. Um, you'd have to buy the guide scope separate and the adapter here to mount the guide scope on is also separate. Um, and when you purchase the telescope, you also get this cool little carrying case and I do intend to, to travel with this. It's a very, very light setup. Um, in fact, I can, when I move this in and out of the house, I just do the whole thing as one unit. There's no breaking down, setting back up. It's very, very easy to, to get going, which is great. So, so far I've had a few clear nights with this telescope and I've been able to capture NGC 7000. So far I got about five hours on that and also went for the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. That was the first time I've ever imaged that object and I got about seven and a half hours and I, I think I got some pretty good data off. I'll show the uh, images that I was able to capture at the end. But uh, one other cool thing about this telescope is at the front here, when you take the uh, shield off, or the cover off for the shield, it's got an integrated batten off mask for focusing. So that just you know, screws right off and um, pop that right back on, you can do your, your focus, um, which is great. It's always cool to have a batten off mask included. I've been running my, of course, do zappers with it, just to, to keep the do out. And it's interesting, you focus just by turning uh, the section here, which is kind of like a, more like a camera lens than a telescope. But that's the way this uh, telescope is set up. But uh, you can also run this visually. I have not done any visual work with this telescope. I strictly just use it for, for photography. Uh, if you do want to do visual astronomy, you do have to purchase a separate adapter and a diagonal uh, to put in the back to uh, use it in that manner. But uh, yeah, I've just been running with the AVX mount. This seems to be a great mount for the, for the telescope and uh, I've really been enjoying it. So far I've wanted to get a, a wide field scope for a while. I do a lot of work with my cellar strong, uh, the A to C. I love that telescope, very, very close up, great for the planets. I love doing planetary work, but uh, it's my first uh, real, I've also had a 80 millimeter B telescope, but this is even wider than that. It's only 250. I intend to use this probably quite a bit over the uh, next month, so there's a lot of stuff you can, you can uh, go after with this kind of setup. But uh, yeah, why don't we take a look at some of the uh, photos that I've been able to take uh, just over the past few nights with uh, this setup. 